Did you know that the Dogaldo Law Group was billed over $50,000 to defend this litigation? She answers, why would I know that? She says, I don't handle that. And your answer is that you don't handle that. She says, I don't. I'm the mayor. I don't know why you try to put me with day to day. I don't handle that. This deposition was very difficult to read. When Mayor Hanyard views you as an enemy, she doesn't give you an inch, nothing. And you will see that in this deposition. It was like the average village meeting. Y'all should be ashamed of y'all selves. Getting up at press conference, talking about nothing. Learn the laws. I tell y'all that all the time, learn from me. But because I'm younger than all y'all, y'all think y'all can't learn from me, huh? <laughs> Same combative attitude. Hanyard was defensive, evasive, unprepared, impatient and deflected all responsibility and she even lied under oath all fantastic qualities in a super mayor let's get into it so if you haven't watched the video of keith freeman his deposition it will be in the link uh, below this is the same situation here Odison and the law group is trying to sue to get their funds they did the work they need to get paid but Tiffany Hayard doesn't want to pay them and finding any reason to not to sign a check, not to pay these lawyers because she has a grudge against them and it became a huge mess. But I want you guys to hear from Hayard's own words about paying the people who do work for the village. I see here and we arguing over a, a warrant list. Come on now. People do work in our village. They should be paid for the work they have done. But yet y'all hold a progress, hold the people hostage, picking and choosing who y'all want to pay. That's not right. That's discriminatory. You guys are discriminating against people because what? They didn't give y'all money for y'all D2s? Like, why do y'all pull people out of this trustee house? Y'all need to stop. Now we will get into Mayor Hanyard's deposition. And I'll ask you guys a quick question. Do you think she was on time for this deposition? And of course, your girl was late for the deposition. The deposition was supposed to start at 9 a.m. The mayor through council indicated she was running late. So we're going to start now. It's about 9.40. So you already know what is going to happen. And let me tell you, it just gets more and more ridiculous. Um, in your own words, can you tell me what this case is about? She answers, this case about you guys. When you say you guys, she says, your firm. He says, okay, suing for funds. Is that it? Yeah. So your understanding of the case, and I don't want to because I asked you to put it in your own words, is that you guys, my law firm, is suing for funds, correct? She says, correct. And we're not suing you individually. We're suing the village to be paid for our legal fees. Would that be accurate? Dan Hain, your lawyer, jumps in. I'm going to object. Misstates the caption of the case. He says, okay. Your understanding of the case is that my office is suing the village to recover legal fees, correct? She objects again. Is that correct or not correct? She objects. Okay. But if she objects... But that goes into record, and then if it ever gets in front of a judge, the judge will rule on that. Just because there's an objection doesn't mean you don't answer. Then she says, but I have answered. You asked me to put it in my own words, and that's my own words. Yes, and I follow up. And you're rephrasing my words. You want me to agree to what you're saying. I don't agree. Okay, why do you not agree? Because you guys are suing for funds. That's what you're doing. Okay, when you say funds, I'm not clear. What funds to you? Or what do you mean? She answers, money. Okay, have you ever reviewed the complaint for this lawsuit? The complaint for the lawsuit, the one for you guys suing for funds, right? The, the reason why we're here is because of a lawsuit. A complaint was filed in court. There has been an answer and other documents filed. So yes, the complaint. Have you reviewed that complaint? I looked it over. And when did you first look it over? When I had to answer the questions. Okay, when was the last time you reviewed the complaint or the answers to the questions in the complaint? when I submitted them. Okay, I don't want you to tell me any statements or conversations you may have had with your attorneys, but did you work with your attorneys to provide those answers? She says, I did not. Okay, was that complaint sent to you by someone? And Miss Granfield, obviously uh, still representing uh, Hanier right now. She's part of the Dogaldo Law Group. She says, I'm going to object. I think we're getting into attorney client privilege here, and I'm going to instruct her not to answer that because she's being sent a complaint that's getting into what she's specifically doing in relation to this lawsuit. But Mr. McGrath says that's not attorney-client privilege. But then he asks the question, do you have a copy of the complaint? Then the lawyer jumps in again saying, I'm not going to instruct her to answer those questions. Well, let me be clear. I don't want you to talk or state any conversations or communications you had with any of your attorneys. The question is, did you receive a copy of the complaint? And then Hanyer's lawyer had to ask the question, can we go back and see what the previous question was? You had to read it back again. 
for the record above, the, the reporter reread the question. Was the complaint sent to you by someone? She says, okay, so, okay, she did not answer it. She says, well, well, when you say a copy of the complaint, what do you mean? Mr. McGrath says the complaint has been filed in the case. Did you get a copy of it either by email or was it left by your office or mailed to you to review? She said, don't recall. You stated just a few moments ago that you did review the complaint after it's filed though, correct? You just testified to that. Hanyer answers, to my response, to what I wrote, to my answers. I don't even know what that even means. He says, yes, so I'm going to delve into that a little bit. So the copy of the complaint, and then did you provide the answers to the paragraphs in the complaint? I answer the questions, correct. Okay, have you recently read any of your answers to the request to submit? She says, what does that mean? It's another document that we sent to you through your counsel, a request to admit our specific questions that you either have to admit or deny. Did you recall seeing that document? She says, whatever I answered in the file is my answer. So I don't know what you're stating right now. I'm just stating, did you recall receiving a request to admit specific questions that were directed to you from my office for you to answer? She says, I answered them, right? So no, but the question is, did you receive that document and did you answer the questions? This just gets more and more exhausting, so get a drink if you need to. The village code provision that was typed out in request to admit and sections of the Illinois Municipal Code, did you recall that? Ms. Ms. McGrath jumps in again and says, I'm going to have to object that it rephrases whatever she said. He said, okay, that's your objection. She, then her lawyer says, her answers to the request to admit are her answers. Then she says, okay, you can answer. Yes, all, all my answers is written, okay, by me. Why did that take so long for them to get to that point? Why Hanyard has to be so difficult? And we'll go through them. But in your request to admit, you acknowledge that the passages from the Dalton Municipal Code book were typed out and were accurate, correct? Her lawyer jumps in, I'm going to have to object because you're asking her to. Ms. McGrath jumps in, can you just base, just give a simple objection, Cynthia, you know. You know how it goes. Just make your objection and she'll answer the question. Okay, but I'm going to object and instruct her not to answer because it's too confusing. How is it too confusing? McGrath says, no, no. Ms. Granfield says, you're showing her an admission that's not, that's different. McGrath says, respectfully, it's up to the respondent to say it, it's confusing or they don't understand. That's why we went through the rules at the beginning of this deposition. So you could just contain your objections to what other attorneys do during depositions. Make your objection. She says, there's no need, there's no need for that. Okay, just make your objection. There's no need for that kind of commentary. Make your objection. And uh, Mr. McGrath just jumps in and starts asking more questions. And Mayor, you have to respectfully answer the questions unless you're directed not to answer the question by your attorney, at, that, at which point we will certify the question and then we'll go in front of the judge. So McGrath says, why don't you just re-ask the question after all that? He says, okay. Mr. McGrath, in the request to admit, would you agree that you acknowledge what the law is as it typed out in the request to admit that there were sections of the Dalton Village Code and sections of the Illinois Municipal Code that they were typed out accurately in the request to admit. Objection. Misstates the evidence, incomplete of the whole, and I'm going to refer to her answers. He says, okay. And then Ms. Gress said, you can answer. She just said, refer to my answer. That's not her objection, but you have to answer the question. Whatever I wrote is the answer in your request to admit, and we'll go through it. There's passages in the Dalton Code and the Illinois Municipal Code that you, which you acknowledge are typed out accurately, but your request to admit answers and then go on to the state. I did not violate either Village Code or Illinois Municipal Code. Do you recall supplying those type of answers? Then it jumps in again. Again, misstates the evidence, incomplete or whole referred to her answers. She says, whatever I wrote. Mr. Graff, so whatever you wrote was truthful and accurate at the time that you submitted those answers, correct? She says, correct. All right, as you sit here today, you maintain that those answers were truthful and accurate. So they actually start getting into some of her background. Apparently she graduated from Thornridge High School. Hainer gets upset about why are you asking her all these questions, asking her, did you graduate from college? She says, uh, Robert Morris. Does anyone really believe this? She went to Robert Morris in the fall of 2021 and graduated in two years with a bachelor's in business, an accelerated program, mind you. She says, I went all year round, full year. Does anyone believe that? She gets a little annoyed. I'm not about to give you my history. What? Let's get to the deposition of why I'm here. He says, okay, you want to know about my childhood? What's going on? Everyone know we have a legal fight, right? 
So let's let's get to that. So she has the that that angry uh, defensive position already. She doesn't want to play around. He he says, unfortunately, that's not how it operates. Well, I don't recall. Okay, so your testimony under oath today is that you don't recall your jobs, positions you held, or businesses you may have owned or operated after you graduated from Robert Morris. She says, yep. Okay, you are an elected official, correct? Yes. You are a politician as a result of being an elected official, correct? She says, yes. What was the first public office you ever ran for? She says, trustee. All right, what year was that? I don't recall. When you first ran for trustee, and that's for the village of Dalton, correct? Correct. And you were elected. Or did you run multiple times? I ran twice. Okay. Okay. So the first time you ran as village trustee, were you not elected? She says, no, I didn't make the ballot. Okay. You ran a second time and you made the ballot, correct? She says, correct. And you were elected as village trustee, correct? And what year was that? 2013. Who was the mayor of Dalton when you were running? Riley Rogers. So he asked this question for the village of Dalton. When did you first run for mayor for the village of Dalton? She, she answers during the election cycle. Okay. What year was that? I don't know. He says, what year? She answers, whatever year it ended is the year I ran for mayor. Is she just unable to recall things or is she just being as annoying as possible? But now we're going to get into the lawsuit and the different law groups that are going back and forth here. So you have the law group that is suing currently. You see in a deposition, Otison, McGrath, and the crew, right? They're looking to get their money. As you guys may already know, Tiffany calls the, the Galdo group the village attorney when it's really just her attorney. So they're trying to get to the bottom of the situation. She's going to have to pay those other law groups. So what's the problem paying this law group? And then he jumps in with the question. Did you know that the Dugaldo law group was billed over $50,000 to defend this litigation? She answers, why would I know that? Are legal bills, invoices, and vendor bills sent to the village of Dalton for your review? She says, I don't handle that, okay? Do you ever review any of the Dugaldo's law bills? Again, I don't handle that. So the question or the answer to the question that you don't review any of the Dolgaldo Law Group's invoices that are sent to the village of Dalton for legal services. She says, I just answered that. And your answer is that you don't handle that. She says, I don't. I'm the mayor. I don't know why you try to put me with day to day. I don't handle that. You can hear her voice when she says that, right? Okay, so I'll move on. But the answer to the question is that you don't review those legal invoices. She says, I don't handle that. That's it. That's my answer. So he asks, he asks one more time. And is the response then that you don't review the invoices? Then she jumps in. Objection. Then Stanfield objects, saying that this is not about the Doug Aldo Law Group. He says, okay. He says, you can answer. I've already answered. And what? And what is your answer? I don't handle that. Do you have any idea, any ballpark figure in your mind about how much the Doug Aldo Law Group has billed the taxpayers of the village of Dalton to defend this case? She says again, I do not handle that. She don't handle the day-to-day. -day. Unfortunately, she kind of repeats that uh, throughout this deposition. And also later on, we'll talk about how she's just lying. And she literally said the opposite thing at a board meeting. But let's continue. Now they're going to talk about her being elected uh, and the recall that happened. Let's go on. You were sworn in a mayor of the spring of 2021. She says, yes. All right. At the time, did you have control of the board of trustees? That is, that the majority of the board shared the same ideas, goals, policies as you. She answers, we just got into office. Okay, the spring, moving on to that first month, the first few months being as a group together, did the board typically vote along with your policies and your ideas at village board meetings? She answers, we only had maybe two board meetings. You're, you're just talking about the first month? She says the first month. Okay, let's go about it this way. The structure of Dalton's government is that there's a mayor and a board of trustees, correct? She says, correct. And there's six trustees. She says, correct. At the time that you were sworn in as mayor, the other trustees were Belcher, Brown, House, Steve, Norwin, and Holmes, correct? Okay, so going back to 2021, when you were sworn in as mayor and there was the makeup of the board, would you agree or disagree that the majority of the board was not in line with your policies and direction of the village? Let me make sure I understand. Then her lawyer objects again. She asked the question to the lawyer. So you're asking me was my board with my vision? What? I'm going to try to read it again. So you're asking me, was my board with my vision? It's like she misses some words there. Okay. He says, yes. In the spring of 2021, there was a board of trustees because you referred to them as my board. She says, mm-hmm. And they stayed with your board and shared your visions and directions of the village of Dalton. The, her lawyer objects again. Hanger answers, the first two meetings, we didn't have no problems. Okay. What happened starting with the third meeting? She says, you guys got involved. Okay. And what happened? You created turmoil. 
I think she likes that word. She used that word quite often, turmoil. So you will be talking about what month in 2021? I really don't know. And was anyone from my office at the third meeting or fourth meeting after you were sworn in as mayor? Which would be, she says, I, I believe you. Would that be reflected in the meeting minutes? She says, yeah, right. When she ever do her job? Probably not. And you got to go and watch a video to make sure you've got the minutes right. When you say she, who, she answers the clerk. We went through what the minutes are previously and what they're brought into the subsequent meeting. And then they could be amended or modified if they're inaccurate. And you're saying that's true. And that's what take place in the village of Dalton, correct? She says, no. The meeting minutes aren't presented to be reviewed at a subsequent meeting and, and voted on by the board to approve the minutes. She answers, and I tell them the minutes are wrong all the time and they still vote for it. He says, okay. She says, so. Going back to the spring of 2021, at some point did the majority of the board tr trustees start to go against some of your actions or direction for the village? And again, they keep going back and forth, but it get to a point again where she tries to deflect any kind of responsibility. So right here, McGrath asks uh, this question. Yeah, okay. And after the time ran through, we represented the board as a legislative council, and then we submitted invoices for payment specifically for August and September and October and November and December of 2021, which was laid out in the complaint. And you answered the complaint. You don't dispute that, do you? She says, I don't. Okay. And we also submitted an invoice for January of 2022, which was comprised of the first six months of our office representing the board of trustees as legislative council. And again, that's all in the, in the complaint. You don't dispute that, correct? She says, correct. And when our invoices were submitted, they were voted on by the village board meetings and approved for payment. That would be contained in the meetings if they're accurate. And that also would be in the YouTube videos and recordings of the meetings, correct? Hanger's lawyer throws an objection, lack of foundation, approved, whatever. Mr. McGrath says, correct. She says, correct. She says, I'm assuming it is. All right that the first six minutes were worked as a legislative council and submitted our invoices. Those are, those invoices were approved by the board and you did not veto a single invoice, correct? Uh, Stanfield did another uh, objection. Hang your answers, don't recall. Okay, if it's not contained within the meeting minutes during the time period of any YouTube video or any audio recording from the village board meeting, is it safe to say that you did not veto any of those invoices? Hanya's lawyer throws another objection. She says, I don't recall. Mr. McGrath is trying to get her to admit that just because you're having some issues with how the minutes are ran, the board voted for them to get paid. You didn't veto it, they should get paid. But obviously Hanya is going to try to wiggle her way out of it. Right, but if you would, I mean, you acknowledge that our office submitted their invoices for the first six months as, as legislative council and those payments were approved by the board and our office was paid by the village of Dalton after those. Payments were approved by the board. Would you agree? She says, yes. Okay, can you explain the warrant process? A warrant or what is bills that are outstanding to be paid? And how, how does that operate in the village of Dalton? She answers, I don't handle that. I think I told you that a million and one times. I don't handle the day to day. I'm the mayor. That's it. Why do I, why do I say it like that? Anyway, okay. What's your understanding of how the process operates in the village of Dalton? If a vendor, a company that performs services for the village, they submit a bill to the village, what takes place? Explain that process. She says, that's more for administration. Okay. And then you're the head of the administration, correct? She says, correct. As the mayor, it's your administration and, and you have regular meetings with your administration. She says, I do not. Okay. Do you have any monthly or weekly, bi-weekly meetings with anyone in your administration that has to do with invoices or bills being submitted to the village for payment? That's what a village administrator is for. That's not my job. Okay, do you have any role in putting together the bills that have been sent to the village for presentment to the village board at a village board meeting? She said, I do not. Okay, you're aware that any invoices or bills that are submitted to the village have to be reviewed and voted on by the corporate authorities. Hanyer's lawyers objects again. Lack of foundation, overly broad. Uh, Hanyer says, okay. When you say, okay, is, is that she jumps in? I'm saying because you made a statement. You're saying that. Okay, again, go through the process if she jumps in. I don't handle the process. No, you made that clear, but you are aware of the process that bills are submitted to the village for payment and that those bills go into a warrant list, a document that is then presented at a village board meeting for review and voted on by the corporate authorities. Hania's lawyer just throwing out a bunch of objections. I don't even know for what reason. Just trying to protect her client, right? Hania says, so bills as related to you guys, what I was told that what you guys put in the bills was for election work and you don't supposed to do that. That's illegal. So you keep saying the process. That's the only thing they ever told me. So now we're getting into Hania's argument here. She believes that 
They should not be paid because it was election work. But again, she don't know how the process is done, even though she's been a trustee for eight years. She's just being difficult. When you say they told you, who is they? She says, meaning the VA, the village administrator, Keith Freeman. So the village administrator had conversations with you in regards to our legal invoices? She says, yeah, because you had, because you had election. Yeah, the election was on there, okay? Because I asked, and it was. Have you ever reviewed any of those invoices? I have not reviewed any invoices but I've asked about it. When he told me about it, I asked, inquired, do you know what percentage of our invoices contain election work as compared to drafting ordinances and consulting with the board of trustees? She says, I do not. Okay, and that's because you haven't really reviewed any of our invoices. She says, correct. Going back to the warrant, the warrants that are part of the agenda and the packet that goes to the board of trustees before any village board meeting. Who puts those together, the warrants? The warrant, that will be handled by administration. Okay, do you have any say as mayor? I don't. You're starting to interject. She says, she says, oh, go ahead. Do you have any say as mayor on what items go or do not go on the warrant list? She says, no. Have you ever directed anyone within your administration to place or not to place warrants on a warrant list as a mayor of the village of Dalton? She says, I don't overstep. I don't overstep. She says, okay, I'm okay. He said, okay, I am the mayor. I keep telling you that it's the day to day is handled by administration. So Right. But the question is, do you believe that you have the authority to direct what goes on the warrant list and what doesn't go on the warrant list? She said, I just answered. As the mayor of the village of Dalton, I just said, I don't overstep. My authority is mayor. That's it. He said, okay. He said, that's it. He said, do you? She answers, day to day is ran by administration. Do you believe that comes within the purview of your authority as mayor of the village of Dalton that you decide what goes on the warrant list and what doesn't go on the warrant list? I just answer that same answer. You said that you don't overstep. I don't. The problem is with that statement, I don't run the day to day. I don't handle any of the administrative tasks. She totally contradicts herself in this village board meeting that was about a year ago, last year in October. Let's listen. You, whether you like me or not, I still respect the seat. And you guys sit in a seat that I sat in for eight years and that's trustee. Your jobs, as I always tell y'all, is to legislate. You guys do not run the day-to-day -day operation and you need to stop trying to. The job of the day-to-day -day operation is overseen by the village administrator, the management, and myself as your mayor. So Wait, what? Let's repeat that real quick. Hold on a second. Run the day-to-day -day operation and you need to stop trying to. The job of the day-to-day -day operation is overseen by the village administrator, the management, and myself as your mayor. So please respect how the um, setup is. That's the problem with Hanyard. She talks too much. She can't keep up with all the lies that she talks about. She just literally said that under oath lying, saying that she doesn't handle the day to day. She just told the trustees, I'm handling the day to day. It's my administration, it's my group and me as the mayor. I handle the day to day, right? It's on YouTube. You can look it up yourself. But now they're gonna talk about the fact that Hanyard has multiple law firms defending her. Okay. And defending you in this case is the Dogaldo Law Group and now the Storino Law Group, correct? She says, correct. So now you have two law firms defending you in this case where our office is trying to get fees or funds, correct? She says, okay. Okay. The complaint lays out that the fees or funds that we're looking to recover were approved for payment by the board of trustees. That's at least alleged in the complaint. Fair enough. She says, if that's what the complaint says, okay. And the complaint also says that you did not veto any of those approved payments by the board of trustees, correct? Then Haney's lawyer again objecting, um, which is, I, I guess she's just trying to make sure that she's doing something. I don't know. He says, you have to answer. She says, it's whatever, if that's what the complaints say. Okay, you are not paying personally the defense legal fees in this case, correct? She says, correct. The village of Dalton taxpayers, the residents, are paying for the defense of this case. The two law firms that you have defend you in this case, correct? She says, no one has gotten paid. What are you talking about? And he responds, no, no, I'm not talking about if they have been paid or not, that there's going to be an obligation to pay the law firms that are defending you, correct? We're just gonna keep, we're gonna pass through some of these objections. Miss Granfield should be paid for her time being here and defending you, correct? She says, correct. In the Storino law firm filing an appearance, reviewing documents and defending you, they should be paid too, correct? When we discuss it, when we get to that point, when you discuss what? They've, or, they've already filed an appearance on your behalf to be your attorney. Okay, okay, okay. And they should be paid for doing the defense work and defend you in this lawsuit, correct? 
I think I've answered that. No, I don't think she answered at all. He says, well, if I can ask you one more time, because I don't think you have, should Storino be paid for defending you in this lawsuit? When we get to that point, we will discuss it. Should they be paid for defending you in this action? Yes or no? Granfield objects. Mr. McGrath says, you can answer. I just, it's the same answer that I just gave. Repeat it because I'm older. When we get to that point, we will discuss it. Okay, so there's a chance based on your discussion that you will decide if Storino won't be paid for defending you in this matter. She answers, we haven't discussed it. So when we discuss it, I can have a better answer for you. So when you discuss it, can I take it that there's going to be a couple of options? Either you're going to pay them or they won't be paid for defending you in this lawsuit. I can't give you an answer to something we haven't discussed yet. What? But remember that video I showed you earlier? She already told us how it should be. I see here and we arguing over a uh, uh, warrant list. Come on now. People do work in our village. They should be paid for the work they have done. But yet y'all hold a progress, hold the people hostage, picking and choosing who y'all want to pay. That's not right. That's discriminatory. You guys are discriminating against people because what? They didn't give y'all money for y'all D2s? Like, why do y'all pull people out of this trustee house? Y'all need to stop. Then they talk about that recall that she had that she's still pretty upset about. All right. And that occurred through the board of trustees sometime in the spring of 2022. She says, I don't recall. Do you think it happened in 2021? I'm not sure. I don't recall when it happened, but it happened. You can still, you can still tell she's pretty salty about that. Okay. And how did it make you feel when the Board of Trustees passed an ordinance and took efforts to put a recall referendum question on the ballot? Do you recall you as the mayor of the village of Dalton? She says, I'm still here. But how did it make you feel? Were you in favor of it? Were you vocally opposed to the actions of the board? Of course you're opposed to something like that. I just won my seat by 82%. And did you veto that question? I don't recall. All right. Do you recall if you veto it that your veto was overridden by the board? I don't recall. Do you recall that the referendum question that was presented by the board of trustees, if it appeared on the ballot in the election of 2022? I don't recall. You don't recall if the referendum question was on the ballot of in 2022? I don't. Hanier continued to shift the responsibility for reviewing legal bills to the village administrator, Keith Freeman. He said it was improper charges. She's going along with that. So saying, it's not my fault. I don't, I'm not responsible for the day to day. Like she said, I'm not responsible for that charity. I'm just a face trying to remove herself from the situation, even though she is the mayor. She is at, at the top of the administration, but she still thinks that this lawsuit is illegitimate. Both Hanyer and Freeman showed a lack of detail recalling anything significant about the conversations about the legal bills, indicating they try to find a way to beat this case by not expressing the fact that they may have done some wrongdoing here. Both showed uncertainty about administrative procedures and resolutions, trying to find ways to get out of getting in trouble, looking like they're doing something wrong or illegal. Hayner may have said, I don't recall at least a dozen times. I don't remember. She doesn't remember her own recall, which of course she did because she, she holds it over everyone's head. She's extremely upset about that. But it, during this deposition, she doesn't recall certain things. But like I said before, Hanyard had an attitude of being extremely defensive and patient, um, consistently deflective, pretending that she doesn't have a lack of detailed knowledge about how this works when she was a, a trustee for eight years. It's more of the same. But what do you guys think about this? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for taking time to watch this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video.